Hey guys, it's another Cooking Foods from Countries Around the World. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel and we are cooking another meal from around the world and this time we drew Germany. So I've been doing my research and I'm excited about this one. Several of you in the comments left this suggestion. I got tons of great suggestions. So thank you for that. And I'm so excited that you guys are loving this series because I'm loving it too. And so today we're going to be making a classic German dish called Rolladen. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Rolladen. And this is a beef dish. <laughs> It's a beef dish and the flavors sound pretty good. So we're going to be making some Rolladen and we're going to be doing it in the Instant Pot. So let's get cooking. So this dish caught my eye because it sounded so different and it had so many flavors that I love. So we're going to be starting with some top round steak and I got some thin cut. I have here about a pound, which is what I wanted. We're going to be using bacon. Who doesn't love bacon? We're going to be using mustard. We're going to be using pickles, onions. We're going to make a gravy. This is going to be a good time. I'm making this today in the Instant Pot. That's because <clears throat> it's, what, it's what I... That's what I'm doing. <laughs> I'm doing the Instant Pot. I saw this recipe um, for the Instant Pot and it seemed very interesting and an easy way to make this dish. You can do this by starting on the stove and then finishing in the oven and letting it bake and roast for a couple of hours. I'm gonna be using the Instant Pot, but this um, looked to be like a, a dish that a lot in Germany will eat for like a Sunday dinner or something like that. And so I was just really intrigued by the pickles and the bacon. I mean, pickles, bacon. Like, I love it. So, let me turn you around, show you what we're gonna do here, and we're gonna give this a taste test when it's done. We are gonna start by prepping some onion. I'm gonna be using one sweet onion here. So let me go ahead and get this started. I'm gonna finely dice about a quarter of this onion. Then I'm gonna rough chop this much. So fine dice, bigger chop, are two different parts of the recipe. Now for the pickles, I saw recipes where people talked about using dill, some talked about using gherkins. This is what I have in my fridge. It's the zesty garlic kosher dill, dill. so that's what I'm gonna use because that's what I have. So I'm gonna get this chopped. And the recipes I saw just left them in like strips like that, so that's what I'm gonna do with these. I'm also going to be needing some bacon, so I took four slices of bacon, and I'm just going to cut those in half. Lay those to the side. Now we're going to take a thin slice of this top round. You can see that they've already got it pretty thinly sliced. If you get a thicker slice, you might want to pound it out. This is pretty thin, so I'm going to go ahead and get this here. We're gonna season with salt, pepper, a 
then we're going to be spreading some mustard. I actually just remembered that I have some Dijon mustard in my fridge. It said to use Dijon or German mustard. I've seen it where they use yellow mustard. I'm just going to use this Dijon since I just remembered that I have it. So a little bit of Dijon. We're going to spread that all over. I think I'm gonna put a little bit more. Okay, now we're gonna put one of our slices of bacon on one end. We're gonna take some of the finely diced onions So I put some of the diced onions on. I'm gonna put two of my little pickles here. All right, let's see if I can do this. I think I wanna spread my pickle out a little bit. Let's do that. Okay, interesting. All right. The recipe says to secure with a toothpick or a metal skewer until it's seared. So I'm just gonna put a little toothpick in there and then we're gonna keep building. Here I have eight of those Rolloden, I think that's how you say it, ready and rolled. Hope I did it right. Let's get them over to the Instant Pot. I have those sauteing in my Instant Pot. I totally thought that I was recording and I wasn't. So I preheated my Instant Pot to saute. I preheated some olive oil and now I'm just searing the little beef roll ups for like one minute per side. You can see that here right there. I'm just gonna do them one minute per side and then take them out of the Instant Pot. Here is the first batch out. Once I seared it briefly, you can see it's not cooked all the way through. Let me get these in and saute those as well. I do wanna say that I apologize for the filming when I'm showing you the Instant Pot. My tripod isn't tall enough and it doesn't work with my kitchen layout to use the tripod to show my Instant Pot. So I try so hard for it not to be shaky, but I'm trying to film one hand and cook with the other hand and and then I try to edit it out, but I apologize and it is my goal this summer to find a tripod that will work or a setup in this kitchen that will work better when I'm actually at the stove or working with my Instant Pot. Now we're gonna get ready for our liquid. Look at all those brown bits. We're gonna deglaze the pan to get our onions going. I've got my onion sauteing in the Instant Pot. I'm scraping up the bits on the bottom. Now we're gonna add in some liquid. I have some beef stock that I'm gonna add. You can add water. Some people deglaze the pan with red wine. I did read lots of versions of this recipe and there were some that use like 
celery and carrots and all of that into this broth part. Um, there were some that put cranberry sauce. I saw um, some grape jelly in a recipe. All kinds of things going into that sauce. I'm keeping it simple, folks. Um, so I'm just gonna wait for those onions to finish sauteing and then we're going to get those seared meat rolls back into the Instant Pot and I'll tell you how we're gonna finish it off. Now that we have our onion sauteed, our beef broth in there, I'm keeping it really simple. I'm not putting anything else. I'm just going to be adding back in these rolludens. Oh, I don't even know how to say that. I'm just gonna put those back in there. The smell is phenomenal. Phenomenal? Phenomenal. Y'all. Okay. Get that back in there. Okay, so now I've turned the saute off. Got my lid on. Make sure this is sealed. And then we are gonna be cooking this on high pressure for, let's do 30 minutes. And then we'll do a natural release for 15. Okay, so we've almost had a natural release for 15 minutes. And then I'm gonna tell you how what we're gonna do to finish this dish. Okay, it's been 15 minutes. Okay, here's what it looks like. I hope it stayed together. I don't know. All right, I'm gonna take the meat rolls out and start working on this gravy. Okay, they pretty much stayed together. So I've got those pulled out. I have all of this broth that I'm gonna try to thicken. So I'm gonna turn this off and turn it back on saute. And then we're gonna heat up this to a rolling kind of saute boil. And I'm gonna add a cornstarch slurry. Y'all probably know what a cornstarch slurry is, but I'm just gonna take I'm gonna give that cornstarch a stir in that water, get it combined, and then we're gonna be adding this to the broth. Okay, this has come up to boil. I'm gonna add in the cornstarch. And we're gonna give that a stir. All right, here is that rolludin. I'm saying that right. Um, my gravy didn't get as thick as I wanted, so um, there's that. But I think I just need to add more cornstarch. I don't know. But this smells amazing. Usually this dish is served with potato dumplings or red cabbage. I did not make that today. I'm just gonna be tasting this rolludin. Rolludin. And I'm gonna let you know what I think. Okay, so here we go. We are tasting this German dish. I didn't have time today because I'm actually doing this after school to do a potato or the red cabbage. So I'm just tasting the meat dish. Oh, and the gravy is just now starting to thicken up. So I think I just got impatient because it smells so good. I just wanted to taste it. So I have a bite here with pickle. I hope it's not too hot. <laughs> With the pickle, the onion, the bacon, the mustard. Oh, it's dripping. Here we go. Hmm, that's very interesting. Because the pickle And the bacon, in my mind, I was thinking it was gonna be like crispy. It's not, it's soft because it was done in the pressure cooker. I don't think it would matter if you baked it. Um, I don't know, I've never tried it baked, but the meat is so tender and the flavor is there. Let's see, let's try another bite. Mmm. Mmm. The tanginess of 
the pickle with the mustard gives this beef a flavor that I like because y'all know that I like that pickly flavor like a Mississippi pot roast. It's not giving that vibe. I mean, it is because there's a pickly flavor, but it's not spicy at all. It's a very mild flavor. And it's just falling apart, guys. So, this is good. Like, it's so tender. Like, it, it's just falling apart. Mm -hmm. That's good. That's really good. That would be so good over some potatoes. Wow. You guys need to try this. It's like eating the most tender pot roast that you've ever eaten in your life. It's really good. Yay. I like this. Definitely need to try it. This has been a win. Let's see what country we're going to next. Okay, so that does it for Germany. I'm so loving this series. I hope that you are too. I am learning so much. And so if you have not checked out this playlist, I have done Mexico, Mexico. That one was good. India, mwah, so good. I've done uh, England, Greece, England, Greece, Italy, um, Mexico, India, now Germany. So, if you like this series, please give me a thumbs up and smash that subscribe button. And y'all, we are down, I think, to six countries. So, well, let's see what country we're going to be cooking from next. All right. Ooh, this is a good one. This is another good one because this is not something that I'm real familiar with. We are going to be cooking food from Spain. <laughs> Yay, I'm excited about this one because you know from my last video, I love Mexican food. I love the flavor profiles in that cuisine. And I've always been very curious about the difference in Spanish food versus Hispanic food. So if you've got any suggestions, I love getting your suggestions because it gives me a jumping off point for my research. So be looking forward to a recipe from Spain coming up soon. Again, I hope you're enjoying this series. I am, it is tasty, it is educational, and it is fun. And so until the next video, guys, bye.